Heavenly Father, we again thank you for this day, your love and provision for us, your caring for us, giving us life and your Son. Thank you. Amen. Okay, sir. Do you have any theories why Paul circumcised Timothy? Well, I thought we were told, at least through reasoning, in the story of it. Am I thinking of something else? Yes, you're, I think you're talking. Well, I don't think it says it in the story. It's in Acts 16. We can look at it. But I don't think it says why. It just says that he circumcised him. Hey, Rob, could you do a clock real quick? Oh. All right, good. Yeah. Yeah. It would help if you put up a sign that says clap. X what? 16 what? Oh, it's going to take me a while to get there. Why don't you read it for us? Paul came also to Derby and to Lystra. The disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. And he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted this man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. Okay. So is that what you think the reason is? Because the Jews knew his father was a Greek. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, let's see. If you... Look, also, um, uh, that vow that he made. Yeah, the vow. Um, yeah, it's like in 20 or something like that. 20. Uh, 21. Uh, 21, it starts in verse 15. Now, uh, we've read the, read the other one. Now let's read this one. After these days, we got starting in verse 15, Acts 21, 15. We started our way up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea all came with us, taking us to Nason of Cy Cyprus, a disciple of long standing with whom we were to lodge. After we arrived in Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. The following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After he had greeted them, he began to relate one by one the things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. <clears throat> when they heard it, they began glorifying God. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. And they have been told about you. Now, now I... We've got to stop and take a look at that verse right there. You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed, and they're all zealous for the law. And what we are seeing, yeah, they're Jews, but they're Jewish believers, which is where the new covenant started. And the they are all zealous for the law. No, there was no thought given to let's throw out the law, that kind of thing. Wasn't there. Um, Jesus, well, Jesus came and died, so, well, we can't be Jewish anymore. Uh, it just bugs me, uh, as, as well it should. Why? Because they are God's chosen. And no other group does he say after they've rebelled as they have, and all Israel will be saved. Um, and here we have believers, and they are very zealous for God's law. For verse 21, they have been told about you, that you are teaching all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children nor to walk according to the customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Therefore do this that we, that we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take them and purify yourself along with them. Pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Don't ask me. I don't know what that means. 
uh, and all will know that there is nothing to the things which they have been told about you, and that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the law. The keeping there is not to rail. Uh, it's, uh, what's the other one? Salasso. Yes, yeah, Salasso. Yeah. Falasso. Falasso. Yeah. It's been a while since I've read it. Anyway. But concerning the Gentiles who have believed, we wrote, having decided that you should abstain from meat sacrifice to idols, from blood, what is strangled, from fornication. Then Paul took them in the next day, purifying himself along with them, went into the temple, giving notice of the completion of the days of purification until the sacrifice was offered for each one of them. Um, when the seven days were almost over, the Jews from Asia, upon seeing him in the temple, began to stir up the crowd, all the crowd, and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, come to our aid. This is the man who preaches to all men everywhere against our people and the law and this place. Besides, he has even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they previously had seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, in the city with him. They supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was provoked, and the people rushed together, and taking hold of Paul, they dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. While they were seeking to kill him, a report came up to the commander of the Roman cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. At once he took along some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. When they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. That's, that's nice. Um, then the commander came up and took hold of him. I ordered him to be bound with ch two chains. He began asking who he was and what he had done. But among the crowd, some were shouting one thing, some another. When he could not find out what the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. When he got to the stairs, he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. For the multitude of the people kept following them, shouting, Away with him. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I say something to you? And he said, Do you know Greek? Then you are the, not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a revolt, led the 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness. But Paul said, I am a Jew of Tarsus in Cilicia, the, a citizen of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to these people. When he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the stairs, motioned to the people with his hand, and when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew dialect. This has got to be freaking these people out because uh, he, was, he was obviously very intelligent. Um, anyway, he, uh, we see that he's at least bilingual, probably more so. Anyway, Paul begins to speak to the people then. And if you look, um, verse... 22, they listened him up to this statement, and the statement was uh, that God told him to go the way of the Gentiles. They didn't like that. They listened him to that statement, and then they said, they raised their voices, and they said, away with him, such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And fun things continue on there. Um, this is, uh, and, and we look down, <clears throat> look at verse 25, just when they stretched him out with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who was standing there, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? The centurion heard this. He went to the commander and told him, What are you about to do for this man's a Roman? The commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. The commander answered, I acquired this citizenship with a large sum of money. And Paul said, But I was actually born a citizen. Therefore, those who were about to examine him, examine him. Uh, why would you like to be examined like that? You know, you're stretched out on the rack and they're fixing to beat you. And they're, well, we just want to ask you a few questions. Um, by the way, um, that's one of the other things that the United States has been sort of a, uh, an anomaly is, is that. I mean, governments all over the world just, they assume your guilt right away. Um, uh, I don't know if y'all heard Nancy Pelosi uh, said, uh, you know, around the time that they had uh, arrested Paul, Paul, arrested, uh, huh, Trump, not Paul, Trump, um, sorry. Anyway, uh, 
she said, uh, Donald Trump will have the opportunity to prove his innocence. This is unbelievable. This is, she's, she's from, she's not the Speaker of the House anymore, but she, she's in the House. She's very powerful still. And to say something, you'll have a time to prove your innocence. That's not the way it works in this country. Anyway, um, verse 29, Therefore those who were about to examine him immediately let go of him. The commander also was afraid when he found out he was a Roman because he put him in chains. Um, but on the next day, wishing to know for certain why he had been accused by the Jews, he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the council to assemble. And they brought Paul down and set him before them. And boy, it just turns into one mess after another in this, this stuff. Um, now, the, if we go back to the original question, why, why were we looking at this? Um, there are, uh, I don't know if y'all remember, uh, if you ever heard the story, Hudson Taylor went to, to China. Did he, I can't remember, that, did he go over on his, with his own money that last time? Or, I think he'd gone over with the, some mission board somewhere because I think he eventually said, I'm, you, know, you guys are too restricting. Um, but this, this part I know. He began to dress like the Chinese. And he grew his hair out long and, you know, did the pigtail and all that stuff. And people from Great Britain and other white places uh, were deeply offended that he would do such a thing. And certainly he felt led by God. And uh, the reason that he thought that he, he was supposed to do that, he felt God told him to, is so that he looked like everybody else. That they, they, they wouldn't have to be trying to figure out, I mean, it's, it was bad enough that they're looking at this British guy with a, speaking Chinese with an English accent. Um, they, uh, they, they wanted to be able to, their eyes to say, what was he doing? Now, what was he doing? A word that we use a lot here. Uh, he was identifying with them. He was, he was identifying with them so that he would be glorified, recognized. See, this this is what, and uh, his. Uh, you you can't fuss about. Oh, he never did much in the way of ministry. I think that the Bible tells us, and you see. We've looked at two stories so far where it's not a bad idea to, uh, if when you're spreading the gospel, to be somebody that can identify with them. Now, sadly, that can go too far. Um, the first story we read, uh, Paul and circumcising Timothy, there's an issue there because... The, uh, he's going to be going in with Paul, and the, the people are going to be going. Oh, wait a second! This guy's a Gentile. We can't we can't talk to him. And Paul wasn't going the way the Gentiles yet. Um, then you get this this story uh, where they ask Paul because see what has happened is the tongues. Uh, in the United States, for now, we're protected because of our, uh, with practicing our religion. If they only knew it was a relationship, we'd be in real trouble. Uh, we are protected in, in our religion but Paul still needed to show the people 
that he was on their side. They're, they're Jewish. And the Jews were repulsed by so many things that were Gentile. Paul, Paul needed to be accepted, accepted by the Jews. But what had happened was nothing that Paul had done because Paul continued to agree with the law. But this is where it gets started. Again, we're in this country, we're protected. And you can probably go to the church or whatever without worrying about um, the police are going to come busting in and haul you off. Uh, that time is coming, but we're not there yet. As, as such, as that is true, the way that we um, are persecuted is this one thing. And folks, it's the tongue. The tongue, uh, if, if the way you're going to be persecuted, I've talked to many people that had it done to them. Uh, one man, a, a doctor that I knew, uh, as I was talking to him one day, somehow something like this came up and he said, um, as one that has been uh, vilified and suffered underneath these, these stories being written about you in the paper, uh, and put on the front page, he said, "It's, it's unbelievable. You can't, you can't stop it. You're tried, in the as they call it, in the public uh, way. And what had happened here? People had been told there is a man named Paul, uh, and that would have been his uh, his Greek name. They would have still called him." Uh, Schwal, I think, something close to that. But that he now, he's going around telling people to, to, to do away with the law. And so Paul gets with these guys having this oath. Why? Folks, the, the appearance that we give also... Um, speaks rather loudly who we're representing. And you don't, you don't go into, uh, you don't go to a new tribe in uh, Indonesia wearing your suit and tie. I can't imagine what it would feel like to be in a suit and tie in that the environment, walking through the mud and the swamps. Um, well, I wanted to make sure I was dressed properly as a preacher. Um, we, we do know, though, need to identify with the people we're speaking of. It's what God... God when he said, why did he send his son to identify? And why were we given a man to believe in through, through that man we can believe in, God? He's the mediator. He's one of, so we can identify with it. Otherwise, we're not able to. So, again, you can take this to great heights and I think it's it's got to be and you'll hear people use this especially for music um, we had to be playing music they liked or they wouldn't come in okay um, I, th that is not the reason to, to compromise in various things. To identify with the people is one thing, but if you're identifying with their sin and their ways, 
they will look at you as they look at the church in today's world and they go, you're no different than us. You're not. And um, they're, they're correct. So I, I guess, I, I mean, the thing I'm saying is that obviously, uh, at least, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if they inquired of God with these ideas, uh, but the Jews could not accept it. That's one of the reasons, this is one of the reasons they rejected Yeshua, because um, because he did not fit the eschatology they'd been taught. He did not fit the stories. These stories weren't true. They weren't biblical. But they didn't fit that. And to this day, uh, they don't fit. And uh, which is so grievous. that God, that people, the people would not come to Yeshua because of stories they've been told and are not true. It's the tongue. It's the tongue. This is what he was suffering with. It's, it's the quickest way that Satan knows to get to you is with the tongue. And he'll have people saying things. And I, I'm telling you, I, uh, it's amazing the things that are said about you that you didn't know you did. And uh, the, the destruction that's done with that. And so the reason for the writing and everything is because they've already heard about Paul. And they know, they know full well. I don't know how many times we're called, we out here are called a cult. And uh, there's a couple of friends uh, that we have in town that we do business with. And well, one in particular, I'll go with him. But he, he said, these people will come in, they'll be talking about stuff. He said, the other day, they got to talk, something came up about you, or I, I'd been in the store, so that, who's that guy? Something. Oh, it's that cult. Um, and the guy, the guy that uh, I know there, is, is a secular dude. I mean, he's he's not a believer. And he said, I looked at him and said, "It's not a cult. What are you talking about?" And what's amazing is, I don't know that we've had anybody, with the exception of the horns, come out here from the city of Burnett. None, zero. When we first came in, uh, we started going to the churches, and we were most of them greeted, uh, greeted with just downright fear. Um, they just, you know, and they said, "Who's that woman with all those guys? Is that is that her her children?" Um, <laughs> it it just gets going, and. Uh, None of the people in that town have ever been out here. None have been out here and met us and seen what we do and know what we do. Never. Hadn't happened. It's the tongue. Uh, people love to say stuff about others when they don't even know the person. Miss Davis brought up the other day that uh, someone was in a church well, the, the bad thing is that this person was doing the speaking. They were a guest speaker, and they were just blasting. Every few seconds, Bill Gothard and everybody was laughing. I thought the guy had gone. He talked about it so much. I mean, it was in public. And uh, after the service, I met him, and I said, uh, how often have you gone to the, to the basic? He said, never been. I said, what? Never been. No, I'm just calling it the way that it is. I've often wondered what happened to him. Um, he did end up going, remember? He went to... No. But, yeah, to the, when it was in San Antonio. 
he and his wife went after all of that. I don't, but I don't uh, doubt yeah, that you're right. Yeah, they went, and I think he was softened after going and hearing firsthand. You had even signed him up. I, I think you and I are talking it. about a different person. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. I signed him up. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm yeah. pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can understand the short term memory, but the long term, wow. <laughs> um, it was when the this conference is, was in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't you. When we were talking back and forth, it's, it's like I said, uh, the greatest banjo player in the world is married to uh, a very good banjo player <clears throat> that plays a different style than him. And I saw a video of one time they were talking up in front, and you know, there's this little kind of going on and when they stopped for a second and they were tuning her and the woman looked out and went by the way we're married and of course everybody just died because you could tell zap, 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 you know nothing bad nothing but just uh, don't you remember that sure yeah, honey, whatever you say I'm going oh well okay uh, anyway married the married couples are funny in the way that they can talk with each other uh, so he went, but when he, when he hadn't went, he was speaking in front of 1,500 people. And how much you want to bet he never came back and said, well, I was sorry. The, the tongue gets going. And um, if, if, if you could prove to somebody that they were not telling you the truth, more than likely, they will never admit it away from you. Why? Because they have to use the word wrong. I was wrong. They would have to go back to people and said, I said this and I gossiped. I don't do that. Um, very few people I've ever, now I've, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody that actually went back like that. We just don't, did cross our minds. Anyway, I think, Miss Davis, what do you have to, to say on just this? Just two things. Uh, later, when Paul's making his um, talking, giving, his, talking before that crowd, um, even he mentions a certain Ananias, a man who was devout by the standard of the law and well spoken of. And again, he's bringing up the law, the importance, but he said, in uh, First Corinthians, he says, "What is my reward? That I may offer the gospel without charge, so that as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win the more. As to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those under the law, as under the law, though not myself under the law, that I might win those who are under the law." to those who are without the law as without the law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law, there he says, not being without the law of God. But not under it. But under the law of Christ, mm -hmm. that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I may by all means save some. And I do all things for the sake of the gospel. And just again, you know, he was becoming everything that he might win them, mm -hmm. you know, where there wouldn't be a reason they could say, well, I'm not going to believe because you're, you're lawless or whatever, I think is what he was, you know, the reason he was, I mean, it says because of the Jews that he did that. That's right. Yeah, I guess I should clarify the question a little bit. It's kind well, of Okay, let me say one other thing, and then then you can. Um, in the same way, uh, where would Paul get such a thought? He's a Christian. He's, he's a Christ follower. What did Yeshua do? 
with John the Baptist. He walked up and said, baptize me. John looked at him and said, I need to be baptized by you. Let us do this so we can feel all righteousness. 